different award, which is a community service award, which is not political, it's for somebody that is uh, doing things outside of the realm of politics that are good for the community. And this year's recipient was Father Lou. And um, that was in honor of, this is the 50th, this year is the 50th anniversary of his ordination to priesthood, which is of, uh, of note, but also for his long years of service as a Navy chaplain, uh, ministering to the souls of those uh, who are prepared to make the ultimate sacrifice for us. So thank you, thank you for Father Lou. real honor uh, to be able to present that to you this morning. Uh, this year. So thank you. And for any of you who've ever gone to any of Congress and Reeves events, uh, there's a point where usually I'll stand up and introduce folks so that the congressman doesn't forget somebody and I'm the one who gets in trouble. Um, I don't do that. I stand up here and I take the flag. If I forget somebody, uh, I apologize. But uh, I want to start uh, with the officers of our uh, Republican committee here in Steuben County. As I mentioned, uh, I'm the chairman. Uh, the one who really does all the work is Sherry Crozier, uh, Sherry Sherry's first vice chair. I think I joked last year that uh, I was calling for folks last year when I was running for chairman, and, and one member of the committee said, well, is Sherry saying on as the first vice chair? And I said, yes. And they said, well, then I support you all the way for chairman. <laughs> Our uh, second vice chair is Barry Walsh. He's here with his wife, Margaret. I want to also point out that uh, Margaret is our state Republican committee woman for uh, the assembly district represented by Phil Hamasan. So Margaret, thank you for that. And, and the people that uh, Mr. Cole, Mr. DeFrancisco are probably gonna wanna talk to. So uh, <laughs> state committee woman, uh, uh, Margaret Walsh. Our treasurer is Pat Donnelly. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> you're not find a better, more experienced finance person to help run uh, county finances, so. Thank you very much for everything you do. He's being so meticulous with the details, Pat. I really appreciate it. And uh, our secretary is uh, Allison Hunt. I don't think she's here yet, but she's going to be here a little bit later. Uh, we have several of our, my fellow county chairmen uh, that are here. Uh, one thing that's really great in this particular region of the state is the different counties, Republican parties work very well together. We go to each other's events, we support each other's candidates. Uh, we talk about you know, what's in the best interest of our region and of the state, and I've got some really great colleagues that are here. Uh, let's just go around. We have uh, Lester Katie from Schuyler County. <laughs> He's accompanied by his wife, Cindy, who is the Deputy Election Commissioner of Schuyler County. So it's a very important to We've got Rodney Strange, our next door neighbor in Chemung County. By the way, in case you haven't had enough Republican fun, both those two gentlemen are having their dinners this weekend, and nevertheless have taken the time to come to this dinner, so I really uh, appreciate it. Uh, we have Don Castellucci from Tioga County. And we have our regional uh, vice chair for our region of the New York State Republican Party, Trish Turner from the Ontario County Chair. Uh, we have several uh, sponsors, folks that have you know, made a significant donation to tonight, tonight's event. Our platinum sponsor, and you can see this in the inside cover of your ad booklet, is uh, Barton and LeJudas. Now I just want to point out, as our platinum sponsor, and this is the third straight year that that particular firm has been one of our platinum sponsor, and when I called them this year, they didn't hesitate. So I really appreciate all their support over the years. And on the back cover is the Dolmine Group, which is one of our gold sponsors. And same thing, they've been a long time sponsor of the Republican uh, dinner. You know, these uh, sponsorships go a long way to uh, making the dinner profitable. The other gold sponsor is me, and because I'm a jerk, I put me on the ad, but when I read a check, that means my wife approved it, so technically my wife, <laughs> my wife Angie Semblinski is our other gold sponsor for tonight's dinner, because she didn't say no when I said can I write a check to the Republican hey. <laughs> There you go, yeah. Also, a couple other people that we uh, want to point out, uh, our Commissioner of Elections, Vicki Olin, is here. And <laughs> since I've become the chairman, I have a new appreciation of everything they do in the uh, Board of Elections office. I've had a chance to interact with Vicki and her staff. They do a great job. Uh, Vicki is also a state Republican commissioner uh, from the Southern Oregon uh, District. 
Uh, the, my counterpart in chairmanship here in Subban County, we work together great, Don Gwinner, who's the chairman of the Conservative Party here in Subban County. We have a fantastic relationship, and uh, thanks, Don. Always good to work with and, and talk about candidates and how things are going with our races. Uh, great relationship with the Conservative Party. Um, we have several members of the state legislature. You're going to hear from all of them later, but I'll mention them now. Uh, we have our keynote speaker tonight is the Deputy Majority Leader of the State Senate, uh, John D. Francisco from Syracuse. <laughs> our uh, special guest speaker tonight is Brian Cole, the Minority Leader, the Republican Leader of the State Assembly. <laughs> we have our local state legislators here as well, uh, Senator Tom O'Mara. Assemblyman Phil Palmasano. <laughs> we actually got several members of the Palmasano family here tonight. The most popular one is Phil's mom is here too. So this is Palmasano. <laughs> really like this is Palmasano. And Assemblyman Joe Arrigo is here. So thank you, Joe. Our county officials, our county clerk, Judy Hunter, is here. District Attorney Brooks Baker. <laughs> Sheriff Jim Allard. Uh, up this year, we have two of our coroner positions. One of them is here, uh, Dr. Robert Cole. And as everybody's probably noticed, there are two judge positions up. One gentleman who's here has had a very calm summer, and one gentleman here has not. But they're both going to be judges next year, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> the one who's a little calm is your next family and county court judge, Bill Roach. And the one who had to sweat a little bit more, but nevertheless, your next surrogate court judge, Pat McAllister. We are uh, very lucky to be changing over. We, when was the last time we had a new judge? It's been, it's been like 20 years. And to have two very qualified new judges coming in uh, is great for not only the Republican Party, but more importantly for the public safety and the uh, justice of the, the people in the county. So thanks to both of you guys for the new position you're about to take. Um, we have our former state assemblyman, former mayor, former county legislator, still all around nice guy, Jim Bacallis is here. <laughs> State Republican Committeeman Jack Ziegenfuss is, is here. He's the State Republican Committeeman from Puerto Rico. Okay. This is the Republican Committeeman from Mr. Palmasano's district. He is Mr. Palmasano, so that I neglected to say that. From the county legislature, the chairman of the Steuben County Legislature, Joe Perisky, is here with his wife. <laughs> Joe, what did you do with the county government? Other members of the county legislature, Robin Latimer, here. Bob Nichols is here. Carol Ferratella, accompanied by her husband Nick. Aaron Mullen, I believe, is here, accompanied by his wife. And I, I, we have a great county legislative team. Every one of our county legislative Republican candidates is on post. Uh, this year, which shows the, uh, the sheriff gave a big thumbs up on that, because he's having a time. <laughs> and uh, I am too, that uh, makes things a little easier for everybody, but it's more importantly because they do a great job. So thank you to everybody on our county legislative Republican caucus uh, for the work you do. Uh, at the city level, uh, the mayor of the city of Corning, Rich Negri, is here. <laughs> I think everybody knows, uh, sadly, Rich is retiring from his position as mayor uh, this year. I just wanted to say in front of everybody while I got the chance, uh, Rich, thank you so much uh, for your service to the city. Rich is the second longest serving mayor in the history of the city of Portland. Uh, he's done an excellent job. Uh, he uh, is really, really sorely missed, and thank you for everything you've done for uh, this community. So. <laughs> the 
speaking of mayors, the next mayor of the city of Cornell, John Buckley, is here. If you're in Cornell, remember to get out and vote for John. That's going to be uh, the current mayor of Cornell, was elected when I was two. <laughs> he's the longest serving mayor in the state. In case you didn't know, he's a Democrat. I think most people in this room know that. Uh, that's going to be a, a big, big win for the Republican Party. Uh, but more importantly, it's going to be a big win for the people of Cornell. And John Buckley is the next mayor in the city of Cornell. So we're behind you all the way, John. Everybody in Cornell, remember to get out and vote. Also uh, from Cornell, Jessica Cleveland, Cornell Alder Woman is here. The candidate for Cornell City Council, Dan Warren, is here. Thank you. From the Elmira City Council, Nan Moss is here, coming over from Smock County. Thank you. Nan comes a lot of city county. And uh, the next supervisor of the town of Cornellsville, Dan Brown, is here. So as you see, we've got folks from local government, from county government, uh, from county legislature, from state government uh, here, and uh, we have just a great team here in Steuben County with the Republican Party. Republican Party is strong, it's united more than it ever has been across the entire county. And I, I want to thank each and every one of you for all the, the good work you do. With that, oh, and I just see the former city of Corning Republican Chairman Tim Colpine is here. So he snuck in on it. I was greatly chastised last year. I neglected to introduce Tim Colby. Not by me. I, no, I got a lot of texts during the dinner saying, Tim is, is, is my former boss, my mentor, and uh, thanks for everything you've done over the years, Tim. So, uh, with that, we're good to go to dinner. So, the staff can uh, lead us to the So I'd like to, everybody, sort of get work their way back to their seats. And uh, before we move on with the program, I want to especially thank the staff here at the Corning Country Club uh, for all the great work they do, the wait staff and the uh, cook staff and the bar staff for everything they do. So we give them a great round of applause for the folks here at the Country Club. This is the, uh, this is the third year in a row that we have uh, that we have hosted this event here at the Country Club, and, and people, uh, people that come from out of town uh, seem to really like it. So again, thank you very much. Uh, I, I was right. There were a couple people I forgot. I knew it. I knew it would happen. Uh, our former, soon-to-be current county legislator, Tom Ryan from Canisteo, is running back for a seat. There you go. And, and when uh, uh, Chairman Hariski uh, took me aside early this year and said, oh, uh, we have an open seat in Castillo, do you know who's running? I go, I heard Tom Ryan's running. And literally on Market Street, Chairman Hariski did a jig. He was very happy so, uh, <laughs> to have Tom back on the legislature. So uh, thank you for everything you're doing, Tom. Uh, Assemblyman Chris Friend from uh, the Schmunk County region couldn't be here. Uh, Scott Esty is here, his chief of staff. There he is. So, Pass along our best to some and friend, Joe and Phil and Chris and uh, Joe Arrigo, who represents a very small portion of Steuben County, do a great job for us in the State Assembly. Uh, we've got a great team. Um, and then I also want to point out, because we're about to lead into our, we've got two gentlemen in the room that are potentially going to be looking at running for governor. I think every person in the room would be better than Governor Cuomo. Uh, <laughs> But well, we've got uh, two gentlemen that are uh, looking at it very strongly. We're going to hear from them along with some other folks. But there are some other people in the room that were, when I told them there were two potential governors that were coming, they were very excited to come. And they've actually been big supporters of this dinner for a couple of years now. Uh, the Public Employees Federation, PEF, they have a good delegation over here at this table. So I want to thank them for their support. Again, this is not the first time they've come to support this dinner. Uh, so thank you everything the public employees do uh, uh, serving the public. And, and we thank you very much for your support. Thank you. So to introduce our, our first uh, guest speaker, 
I'm going to turn it over to Phil Palmisano. Uh, before I do that, I want to say just a couple things about Phil. Uh, there's, there's nobody, there's, there's very few people in politics where you'll find nobody that says anything bad to say about him. And Phil Palmisano is uh, one of those people. And uh, Phil is somebody, over the course of the, the last week, you know, I've been texting with Sherry about, oh, how many you know, people are coming to the dinner and what's our count and how things are going. And Phil was on that text chain the whole time chiming in, well, you, you can talk to this person, you can talk to that person. So even though he's in the state assembly and has a lot of duties representing you know, over 100,000 people, uh, he's really engaged in what we do here uh, in Steuben County with our uh, Republican Party, longtime active former city chairman, a long time, still on the committee. Uh, Phil, if you want to come up here and say a couple words and then introduce our first guest speaker. You know, one of the, the benefits of uh, myself introducing uh, someone with Kolb and Senator O'Mara introducing Senator DeFrancisco is you're not going to hear a lot from us. Uh, so it's going to shorten that period down so you can hear more from, from them, which is a good thing. And, and, uh, but uh, just basically, I just want to say before I introduce um, some of them in cold, uh, just to say thank you to each and every one of you for what you do each and every day on behalf of our party, on behalf of our candidates. Uh, it's, it's you who are the backbone and the fiber uh, to help keep us motivated, to help keep good candidates wanting to keep running and, and doing the job that we do. So uh, I just want to say thank you so much for that. It's, it's great to be part of the team with Senator O'Mara, Congressman Reed, Joe Arrigo, Joe Giglio. And all our local officials. Um, it's a good team atmosphere, and, and we're, we're proud to welcome Brian Kolb and Senator D. Francisco to be a part of that team here in Steuben County for them taking the time out of their day, their busy schedule as they travel around the state uh, to make a decision of whether this is the right run for them or not, uh, listening to people like you and I uh, across this state. So uh, I just want to say thank you to all of you for coming out and, and, and hearing uh, what they have to say tonight. Um, so. Uh, and I do want to recognize my mom, Joanne Palmasano. She is probably the most popular Palmasano around, so that's a, without question. So thank you. Very much. She, uh, she really, she really loves these events, and she kind of gets fired up. She acts like she's all embarrassed, but she's probably, she's probably the biggest cheerleader around. So, so it's good to see you, mom. Uh, so on that note, I just want to say uh, it's it's my privilege to introduce uh, uh, our one of our next speaker, uh, some of them, Brian Cole. Uh, I've known. Uh, Brian for a long time. Uh, in fact, it, it goes back back to the time when uh, I actually lived in Canada for a couple years when I was working for Jim Bacallis, and my old boss and my mentor, good friend. He always hates when I bring that up, but he is my friend, my mentor. Showed me you could do politics, and service, public service the right way. But I lived in Canada when my wife was going back to school for nursing and actually moved into the same apartment complex as, as, as Brian did. And his first assembly run, uh, he had a real tough battle and he won by actually after a drawn out process won by 10 votes so he's he's happy to get through that and on the back of my car I had a bumper sticker that said Bacallus for assembly he goes who is this Bacallus guy I just got through a race now so but we were we were neighbors and I, I worked on his, his second campaign that he won by 10 10 points and I kind of like to say that I had something to do with that he'll probably dispute that but it it I've known him a long time um, but what you might not know a lot of people know about his public background uh, he was a uh, elected leader in 2009 has been a great leader for our conference um, it just really has the trust and confidence of his members and just a dynamic leader uh, but he also has a great background on the, on the private side in the, in the private sector uh, started his own business uh, was in manufacturing uh, also uh, moved around to other businesses he was a CEO and president of another company so he has great private sector experience uh, was served with all the local government officials in the room served on a town board and was a part of a local board, a super county board of supervisors, so he understands the challenges at the local government level. He was a school board member. Uh, and uh, you know he's been in the assembly since uh, 2009. Uh, like I say, he's a great leader, great advocate. Uh, I know he's not afraid to take the fight. And uh, whoever our, gov our candidate for governor is going to be, is going to have to take that fight to the governor, not, not be afraid to back down. And uh, it's nice to see our candidate speaking up about that. Uh, I, I remember the him coming back to conference one day and saying he had a conversation with the governor. And the governor was basically saying, you need to do this. And he basically told the governor, I don't need to do that. And I'm going to be proper because we're on videotape here that's going out around the area. But uh, he was not afraid to stand up uh, for the people he represents for our conference, uh, for the taxpayers of the state, uh, to the governor, because it was the right thing to do. 
Uh, he's, a, he's a good friend. He's a great leader. And I think you're all going to enjoy to hear a few words from him tonight uh, on some of the things he wants to do, some of the things we need to do if we're going to be victorious in 2018. So if you give me a good, great Steuben County uh, welcome to uh, Assembly Republican Leader Brian Cole. Thank you, Phil. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Right. I don't think I heard from the entire room. Hello, Steuben County. Hello. That's what I'm talking about. Well, it's great to be here. I know you've got a keynote speaker uh, coming up and other speakers, so I'm going to try to be brief. Uh, for those in the area, you'll have a couple other opportunities because uh, Saturday night we're in Schuyler County and uh, Sunday night we're in Chemung County. A couple weeks ago, I was joined by Father here at uh, the City of Corning. And uh, I have to tell you, it's a lot of fun, believe it or not. Uh, certainly, uh, Senator uh, DeFrancisco and I especially have been crisscrossing the state, going to a variety of different places. Uh, last week, we're, just this past week, we're in Orange County and uh, New York City and Long Island and Nassau. Uh, but that's what you have to do. Uh, but the good news for me is, is that this is not new territory for me to visit. Uh, going back uh, when Jim McCallis was the assemblyman, going back to Chairman Bill Hatch, and also especially being leader, is I really have an opportunity to travel the entire state uh, and interacting with our assembly members uh, from every region of the state, from Buffalo uh, all the way across the state, including we have two members in New York City, believe it or not, and uh, Long Island as well. But I will say that uh, right here in Steuben County, you really have terrific members of the state legislature. Uh, they're friends for sure, uh, but they're public servants more importantly. Uh, they don't go down there with an agenda. Uh, they go down there to serve you and the constituents they represent. And I'm just telling you firsthand, you know, I served with Tom O'Meara in the assembly before he went to the Senate. Actually, he was a lot of fun to watch debate, especially there was a gentleman by the name of Richard Brodsky, who was a very liberal guy. And uh, when Tom got going, it was actually very entertaining because Tom occasionally gets a little Irish going. So he gets a little emotional, in case you've ever noticed. Uh, good friend, doing a great job in the Senate. And uh, certainly with Joe Arrigo, Phil Pomisano uh, representing this area, and going back uh, as well to that great Yankee fan sitting in the back there, Jim McCallis, who's really got the gig. By the way, Jim, are you still doing the Yankee games down in yeah. Florida? Got him jealous. One day, one day I'm going to get there. Um, but more importantly, you know, just to leave you with a few thoughts, is that as leader of the Assembly Republican Conference, you know, the press really focuses on the two majorities. We get that, and the governor. And so there's a lot of things that you don't know about the Assembly Republican Conference that we try to get uh, the word out beyond that media filter. And that's what we stand for. Not only what we stand for, but what we vote for and what we vote against. And uh, we have been outspoken champions for a lot of different uh, legislation that is not so good for all of us. And then there's legislation we truly support, and then there's gaps uh, that uh, have been forgotten along the way. And uh, I'm proud of serving with our members, because we, we're at the forefront about talking about the fact that, you know, property tax cap, and I know some of the local officials want to hate that cap, but the cap is truly important. What hasn't happened is the cost side, where we haven't reduced the unfunded mandate burden on local governments. That has to change. In fact, our conference actually uh, promoted it the very first time, putting a cap, hard cap on Medicaid. But we also have legislation, and actually we're going to refine it further this year for an actual state takeover of Medicaid spread out over 10 years. This is what Congressman Tom Reed's been talking about in terms of the reform in Washington. You know, we've been champions for the developmentally disabled, where money was actually reduced by $90 million for the folks that need the help the most in this state. And we stood up on the floor and debated and eventually got that money restored, just like we've been an advocate uh, for the Be Fair for Direct Care workers that serve a very, very vulnerable population. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we should be doing. Those are the communities we should be looking out for first. Those that have a very difficult time fending them for themselves. And through Governor Cuomo's uh, wage 
uh, board increased wages for fast food workers, and we had to take them kicking and screaming to provide help for those direct care workers that are taking care of the families and clients with uh, developmental disabilities. You know, we've been out front on Common Core way before anybody else was. Uh, we've been out front on the opiate crisis. Uh, just now we're dusting off the, not dusting off, finishing touches on a domestic violence task force that our folks have traveled all across the state. Small business tax relief. We have a small business investment uh, act that we've been championing as well. The list, you know, it, it, it's interesting in the dynamic that we're in is that in terms of legislative ideas, good public policy that deals with business and education. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Assembly Republican Conference, we came out with first a comprehensive tuition assistance plan program before the governor came out with this free tuition plan. Because as you know, there's nothing free in life. And every college and university, public and private, said the Assembly Republican plan is the best plan they've seen because it helps everybody. It's private colleges, public colleges, graduate students, and guess what? For those students that are suffering with debt and interest rates, we had relief for them as well. This is what we do. This is what I do. And we speak loud and often, and sometimes it's that you know little voice in the back that isn't heard as much as it should, but that's what a strong advocate does. And uh, you know, you have a lot of practice, especially in our house with the Assembly Democrats. And they'll even admit to you that we win the debate. They just have a few more votes than we do, which is what we're always uh, trying to uh, run uphill against. And when they can take six to eight assembly Republican seats by the stroke of a pen and redistricting, that's, that's not democracy. Let's have a, a, a fair election. And then we'll show you, you know, a conference with ideas and things that are looking out for folks just like yourself. You know, I, I was born and raised in the Finger Lakes. I was born in Rochester. I grew up in a small town in Honeyoy. That's where I got my uh, local government experience. It was extremely valuable. Small town roots, in my mind, really ground you for what life is really about. And certainly that's why I love our region so much, uh, the Finger Lakes region, the people, um, the resources that we have, but it still comes back to the people. Folks like yourself that show up to work every day, uh, you're raising your family. I just had the pleasure of meeting uh, the Walshes. Uh, what a great story. When they told me they had 12 children, I said, boy, I thought I had it bad with three. And, uh, but you know, they're great parents. They love being parents. And that's the type of people quality that you have right here in Steuben County and throughout our entire region. So that's my motivation for exploring the opportunity to be the Republican nominee for governor. And I'm not going to get into all the things we could talk about uh, Governor Cuomo because the list is long and many. But we'll save that for another day. But I will let you know that, you know, the process that we're going through is to take a gauge of political support, potential financial support, if we're the candidate. And so that's why it's important to me to reconnect with every single region of the state see what's on your mind, and uh, I can tell you this, is that is this something that I would be very passionate about? Absolutely. Do I think I could be a great governor for the state? Absolutely. But it's really up to the people to decide that. And because uh, when close friends would say, Brian, you're gonna be governor? I said, well, that's up to the people to decide. And it's just like it's gonna be our party to decide between now and next May who our standard bearers can be. And uh, I plan on announcing uh, my intentions hopefully before the end of the month uh, but what I've said, I've reached out to every single county chair uh, in the state, and I said, if you have any questions for, you, for me, please call, and I would extend it to you as well. If you think of things that you'd like to ask me about a variety of different issues, uh, things that I voted on, uh, things I voted against, um, what you see is what you get, and that's uh, my style. Straightforward, honest, and um, if you ask me a question, I'll give you a straight answer, and if I don't know the answer, I'll go get it. And that's, that's what I do, because I don't pretend to have all the answers. But what I do have is a passion and a heart that wants to make our state better. And that's what's driving me uh, to even look at this perspective of possibility. And I know it's an uphill climb. You know, Senator DeFrancisco will probably talk about that as well. 
You know, I talk about Governor Cuomo's got $29 million. I don't care. You know, as Assembly Republican leader, I've raised over $18 million uh, in not being in the majority. Now that's hard work. And I can tell you this, uh, when we're going to battle with the Democrats and assembly seats across the state, you know, we have never lost an incumbent, in spite being outspent three to one. And outspent three to one. And that's something that we, uh, we may be <laughs> outspent, but we're never outworked. And that's exactly the pretense that I would bring to a campaign trail. You may outspend me, but you're not gonna outwork me. And because what really drives you is I have to answer back to each and every one of you to make you proud that we're going to town and we're going to battle and we're gonna take this state back because that's what we need to do. We gotta get our grandkids back here, we gotta get our kids back here, we gotta get jobs back here, and we gotta lower the cost of living in the state in terms of taxes and regulations. Ladies and gentlemen, we're at the forefront of that. See, I gotta, now I gotta step back because I will keep going too long. So. Uh, you can just tell that I, th this means a lot to me. And so thank you very much uh, for your support uh, for the Stupendon County GOP. Joe, thank you for the, the kind uh, uh, opportunity to spend a few minutes with you. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been great, great audience, and I hope to see you again real soon. Thank you. I do have to say, uh, Leader Kolb, Senator Di Francisco, they've been really getting around the state, and I appreciate Leader Kolb in particular. He came to Corning twice, came to our city dinner, was the keynote speaker in the city of Corning's event, and I was, I think I verified three times with the staff, are you sure you wanna to come to Corning twice in two weeks? And yep, I wanna to come to Corning twice in two weeks. I, I, so thank you very much, and, uh, and I've, same thing goes for Senator Di Francisco. I think I've been having dinner with these guys more than, uh, uh, I'm not running for governor, but I'm going on all these dinners and seeing them everywhere. Um, so, a couple brief remarks, because Congressman Reed is not here, and I do have to earn my actual paycheck, because I do work for him on his political staff, and give an update. Uh, as you probably all know, uh, the House is in session today, and we are working on tax reform. The tax reform bill was, was dropped. Uh, we are going to start the markup process in Ways and Means. And what's important about that, to me, and I, I said this to our policy staff down in Washington over the last a couple weeks. I need one sentence. I need to know. This bill will save the average citizen in the southern tier X. Give me X. And today I got X. And X was $1,600. And, you know, for some people, you know, that's, that's three months rent for their family. You know, that's uh, making sure they could take a vacation if they got a couple days off from their job. It's a, you know, it's a change in being able to uh, maybe take, take a night out for dinner with your spouse you know, once a month. Mm -hmm. you know, these are things that are gonna inject uh, monies into the economy. Uh, you're gonna hear you know, everybody that has a naysay about that tax plan going forward. But that's what Tom's working on in DC. And to me, that simple sentence, your average person is going to save a significant amount of money for an average person. That's, that's a number based on a household of $42,000, family of four, which is an average household in, in the 23rd Congressional District. That was, a good, that was a good answer for me when I was hearing back from Tom today you know, what this bill is gonna do. So we're at the beginning of a process uh, with that. Tom wants to hear from each and every one of you uh, what your input is, what your concerns are with what's uh, put forward. But that's what he's working on in Washington and uh, uh, I would be remiss and frankly derelict in my actual paying job if I didn't actually point out uh, what Tom was doing uh, and express his thanks to everybody on the Republican committee and everything you do for him. Uh, and of course, he's leading into his reelection next year. Tom has nine opponents, which is awesome. Um, the best number is zero, but the second best number is as many as possible. Um, and he's got seven Democrats and two independent candidates who are independents from the left, not from the center. Uh, running against them. So you're going to get a, a real contrast, I think, as they fight to desperately move to the left to win the primary vote in Ithaca between now and June. And Tom simply says, you know, what he's going to do and delivers for you on, on major policy. So that's the a little update from Congressman Reed's world. And again, he passes his thanks to each and every one of you. Um, also from the State Assembly, we have Assemblyman Arrigo, who has, is, is in a return engagement to the State Assembly. He was in the State Assembly a, a little while ago. 
uh, and was willing to step up uh, into the opening uh, that was produced last year with the, the sad passing of Assemblyman Noje. And uh, when it became clear Joe was willing to do it, uh, myself and, and Rusty was the county chair at the time, but I was involved in the discussions and the other two county chairs in the two counties. Once Joe's name came up, that was pretty much it. We were happy that he was willing to do it. We knew that seat would be in good hands. So Joe, if you want to come up and address the folks and uh, give a little update. Good evening. This is always a wonderful event. And speaking about Steuben County, most people don't know that for many years, I was a, uh, an official court reporter for the state of New York. And part of my duty was to come down to Steuben County. So I know many of you right here, and it's not just politically. Now, getting back to our leader, Assemblyman Kolb. He was one year ahead of me, and I saw what he did. And I saw what he did as just a regular assembly person, and working himself on the way up. He's done a great job, and I think that we're fighters. We don't give up. And I can remember when um, Mrs. Uh, what's her name? <laughs> Hillary. <laughs> so, yeah, we, uh, it was almost like a dirty word, but <laughs> um, the, the, the um, person at the time wanted the uh, people to have just the, a card and they could vote, you know, uh, uh, you know the, the, that card. And we knew right away that was gonna bring in about 500,000 illegal immigrants into the state. And we fought. People thought we were crazy. But it got so bad that Mrs. Clinton told the then um, governor, back off. So that was our assembly. So even though we don't have many in our name, but we have that fight. And I, I served with Tom, McKellis, yes, great men. So when I was asked to come back, I said yes. I miss the people. I think this is my fourth retirement. And people ask me, when are you going to retire? When God wants me. So I love my job. I love helping the people. And hopefully, it'll continue. So I'm not going to take any more time. But thank you for being here. Thank you for bringing me back last year. And I will run again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. So now we'll move on to our uh, local candidates that are up this year. And the next gentleman, he insisted that we didn't need to have the local candidates speak. He felt that the dinner was too long. He wanted to move on to the Bills game. If you've ever been to a Republican dinner anywhere near Steuben County, the first that claps first when somebody's talking to cut them off is our next speaker. And I reminded him that he won't be able to come to these dinners at all for 10 years. So uh, you know, he's going to have to get up here and say a few words, and, and then I'll cut him off if he goes too long. But uh, your next judge, Phil Roach. I told Joe, I said, you know, the introductions of local elected officials should never be longer than a cocktail hour. <laughs> it certainly was tonight. My name is Phil Roach. I'm running for county family judge. Uh, thank you for your support, and I appreciate your vote on Tuesday. Thank you. There we go. Roach 2017, everybody. 
<laughs> and in our other, our other judge position, uh, somebody who, as I mentioned, uh, ran a great primary campaign, uh, was all over the county, uh, worked very hard, and uh, somebody that we need to, because of the peculiarities of election law, his opponent has suspended his campaign, uh, but it's still on the ballots. So we need to make sure everybody really does really get out and vote uh, for Pat McAllister on the Republican line. Pat McAllister, your next surrogate court judge. Phil, I don't think I can uh, be that brief. <laughs> 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 I want to thank you all uh, for your support uh, in helping me become the Republican nominee. I want to single out my wife, Kim. I wouldn't have done it without her love and support, so thank you, honey. And I want to thank the Stu Bend County Republican Committee. I want to thank Joe Sempolinski. I want to thank all of our elected leaders for their leadership and keeping our party strong. It's been a great privilege to get around the county and meet so many people and voters. It's been a real privilege. And, um, you know, after the election, if I'm elected, I can no longer attend political events, as you know, but I'll be meeting people on a different level. And people in our county need help, and I want to be part of finding solutions. So uh, I ask for your support. There is some unfinished business, as Joe said. Uh, I want to acknowledge Chauncey Watches. He ran a, a very good campaign. Uh, he suspended his campaign about a month ago, uh, but just so you know, he's still on the ballot. So the unfinished business is to get out the vote on November 7th. I need your support again. And I need you to get out the vote of other people in the county. I don't take it for granted. I keep working hard right up until the day of the election, meeting people on the trail. So I ask for your support, and I ask for your vote on November 7th. Thank you. you know, very important to get out and vote. Uh, as Pat mentioned, Chauncey has suspended his campaign. He said that publicly. Uh, he said very positive things about Pat. As a sitting judge, he can't go into a full endorsement, but he's said everything up to that point that he can legally say. And, uh, but nevertheless, he is still on the ballot on minor party lines. And I would encourage everyone, obviously, to get out to vote, but particularly to look in the circuit court line and vote for uh, Pat McAllister. He's going to be a great judge for us here in Steuben County. Uh, also on the countywide tickets here, as I mentioned, is we have a couple coroner slots. Uh, one of our longtime coroners is here, uh, Dr. Cole. If you want to come up and uh, say a few words. Thank you, Joe. Uh, on behalf of Brian May and myself, uh, we both appreciate everything all of you have done to help our candidacy, especially the onerous petition process last uh, June. Um, so we, again, uh, thank you very much for your support. When we do our work, we're not in a vacuum, but we're almost always doing it with members of the law enforcement community. And I must say that working with the uh, state police and the county sheriff, led by Jim, uh, the various city police agencies and town agencies, their degree of professionalism is outstanding. Their empathy with the family members who are present is outstanding. And their respect for the deceased is outstanding. So my hat's off to them. And we really appreciate uh, the work uh, that they do and the help that they give us and how we coordinate things. I think that last late last summer most of us were glued to the TV watching the events in Texas, the events in Florida, and the events in Puerto Rico. And one thing that I took away is the tremendous value of the first responders in those three regions. And I've had the opportunity to work with first responders as coroner. And I know that most of us in the room here are a little bit old to be doing the
the work of first responders, but certainly some of our children and grandchildren could be encouraged to do that very important work in Steuben County. Because uh, if you come to an accident scene, uh, any other kind of untimely death, uh, first responders often are there and they're very, very valuable and very important. So anything any of us can do to encourage friends, neighbors, relatives to take on that task, uh, I think it would be well appreciated. Uh, thank you for your support and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be serving you again for four years. Thanks. Thank you very much to uh, Dr. Cole, to Brian, our other two coroners. Uh, tough job that's gotten even tougher thanks to our uh, opioid crisis. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Dr. Cole, for what you and Brian do. And, and again, I want to thank you to law enforcement and the first responder community, everything they do. Next, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the city of Hornell is going to have a new mayor uh, for the first time since I think Abe Lincoln. Um, <laughs> I, I've, I've joked with John about this, so it's been a long time. Sean's been mayor a long time. And at one point early in the campaign, Joe said, uh, uh, John said, Joe, you're thinking of it wrong. We're going to have two out of the last three mayors in Hornell. Don't just, don't just shut up about how long he's been mayor in between. But uh, John has, is ready to be the next mayor of Hornell. He's going to do a great job. That's an important position. That is a full-time mayor's position. It's the only one in the county like that. Uh, so John is going to be running that city day to day. Uh, John, come up and talk a little bit about how things are going at Hornell for us. Thank you. Uh, you know, Sean Hogan's retiring after 32 years. I've had the, the honor and pleasure of serving as his deputy mayor for the last four years. And, uh, you know, I've learned so much working under him and, you know, being on the council for eight years. And, you know, there's a lot of exciting things happening in Hornell. Alstom landed a $2.5 billion dollar uh, Amtrak contract. We've got a new hospital that's going to be built. We've got building projects on both ends of the city. There is so much uh, happening in the city. I'm excited to be a part of that. Um, you know, we're, we're not quite there yet. We've got five more days to go. I'll be out knocking on doors and having those conversations with folks, and we'll be working right up till nine o'clock that night. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, say a few thank yous. You know, it's it's really been a team effort. This campaign. You know, we started back in February at the Lincoln dinner and made my announcement and. Uh, you know, it seems almost like another lifetime ago, but you know, I just want to say thank you to uh, you know, some of the people in this room. Senator O'Mara, who's been instrumental, a lot of great advice. Uh, Assemblyman Pomisano, we've had so many great discussions and uh, you know, those words of wisdom and words of encouragement. And Chairman Sempolinski, I, I forgot how many times we've talked in the past few weeks. Uh, you know, speed, dial. Uh, speed dial, text messages. Uh, Mike and Susie Pomisano over there, you know, they, they really, they, they staff our headquarters. They're there almost every day. They do a lot of the legwork. Uh, older woman, Jessica Cleveland from the city of Hornell. I've been leaning on her so heavily, uh, especially recently. Uh, you know, I couldn't do it without you. My wife who couldn't be here tonight. You know, she's really, uh, you know, really keeps me going. Um, but I'm excited to do it. Big shoes to fill. A few more days to go, but I think we're gonna get there. We're gonna keep working hard right till nine o'clock that night. So thank you. And our other uh, city mayoral position is also, as I mentioned, open seat because of Rich is retiring. Uh, Nick Weinstein is our candidate for that. Uh, they are having their second debate tonight. So um, they, that has tied up uh, Nick because he's debating uh, the other two candidates for mayor. Uh, but I do want to put in a plug for him if you're in the city of Corning. What I've been impressed by with uh, Nick's campaign is he's been willing to ask uh, the tough questions about uh, the city government and what can we do better and he's been willing to go out and listen go out and knock on the doors and actually listen to the people throughout the north side and the south side all areas of the city uh, hearing from the people what they want from city government uh, and setting the tone for how he would be as mayor be very responsive and, and very uh, proactive in, in his policy approach so if you're in the city of Corning I would encourage you to vote for vote for Nick I'm sure he's doing very well uh, in his debate, he, I think he won the first debate, so I'm sure he's doing very well right now. Our uh, keynote speaker is going to be brought up here in a second by our Senator Tom O'Mara, but before that I just want to put in a plug for everything 
Senator Romero does for us. He's become a, a personal friend of mine over the last years. We go to a lot of these events uh, together. Uh, when Congressman Reed's in Washington, quite often it's Palmasano, Romero, and, and myself uh, giving, uh, giving speeches. We spend a lot of time uh, together. And he works very hard. Uh, he is uh, a team player. He's involved in what's happening with the assembly members in his district. He's involved in the local races, as uh, John Buckley mentioned. He's been involved in even down onto the, the municipal level. Uh, so Romero does a, a great job for us uh, in Washington. And it's a real pleasure to have him representing us. So if he can come up and say a few words and then introduce our keynote speaker uh, for the evening. I go to Albany, by the way, not Washington, but, uh, but, that, but that's okay. Uh, because D. France said I don't do it in Albany, so uh, he's, glad, he's glad I'm working in, in D.C. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, it is, uh, it's great to be with you all uh, tonight. Uh, I want to thank the uh, committee uh, for all their support uh, to all the candidates. Uh, and particularly in the uh, petitioning process. And certainly fundraising, uh, as we're doing here tonight, is critically important uh, to our candidates uh, as well. You know, I want to thank uh, also our, our other county chairs that are here uh, from our surrounding counties. We're seeing more and more of that of late at our, at our county GOP dinners. And I think it's critically important that we are working together as a region uh, and not isolated in our own county. So uh, it's great to see all of you uh, here tonight. And I uh, uh, thank you for the work that, uh, uh, that you do. And we've got, you know, we're on the circuit now for our annual GOP dinners. Uh, we have uh, Schuyler County on Saturday night, Chemung County on Sunday night, Stabenn County here. We had Ye Yates County last Friday, City of Corning last Monday, last Monday. Uh, and our gubernatorial candidates uh, have been coming around uh, the state. Uh, John D. Francisco, colleague of mine in the Senate, uh, our uh, deputy majority leader. Is that your title, John? I always get confused. Close enough. He's second in command of the GOP in, uh, in uh, the state Senate. Uh, but Brian Cole, my uh, former leader uh, in the state assembly, uh, good friends with both of these gentlemen. Uh, Mark Molinaro, who's formerly in the assembly. He's now Dutchess County Executive. He's been going around the state. Uh, he's been through here. He's been at a Chemung County dinner. He's, he's been at a, uh, other events in the area. John D. Francisco has been down through Yates. Uh, he's here tonight. Brian Cole's been down here. I got to put up with Brian Cole both Saturday and Sunday night again this week. So uh, that's going to be great. Love you. Yeah, and I, and I, and, and I love Brian. And, and, and you know, and then we're, we got Mark Astori or Rob Astorino, who knows what, what, what he's going to be up to after his election for Westchester County Executive uh, next week. And Harry Wilson, who is starting to make some rounds uh, uh, around the state now. Uh, and the most important thing is that every one of those individuals uh, will be not just a better governor than Andrew Cuomo. Any one of those will be a great governor for New York State. And I'm proud to have two of you here that I call friends uh, tonight uh, to be here to, uh, uh, to talk to us and to be making these important rounds and not showing up here next February or next March saying, I'm the candidate, now I want your support. So it's critical that you're doing this uh, early groundwork. Uh, and, and it's important that you're doing this. You know, I want to, uh, I want to congratulate Father Brown for your award you got at the city dinner uh, last week. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't be there. I had to be out of town for a funeral. Uh, and sorry I missed it, but you're absolutely, Father, you're the best. Um, he came to Albany last year, uh, gave the uh, opening prayer for legislative session two days in a row uh, in Albany. And the, and the second day was the day before Memorial Day break. And he wore his uh, Navy uniform. I can't imagine wearing any uniform I had that long ago. Um, neither could my tailor, I can tell you that. But uh, uh, Father Brown got a standing ovation 
on that uh, opening prayer the second day. And Hugh Farley, uh, who had been in the Senate, he just, he's, he just retired last year. He came up after, he got a standing ovation for it. And, and Senator Farley said, I've been here for, I don't know, how many years, John, was Hugh there? 40? 40 years. He said, no um, reverend, priest, pastor has ever gotten a standing ovation from that body. So that's how impressive your remarks were that day. So I, I thank you for your involvement with us here and so many other things that we do, uh, uh, Father Brown. Uh, I got to rip the Walsh's a little bit because uh, I always do. But uh, Brian said that you know they've had 12 kids now and they're great parents. And uh, they're not great parents. They're smart parents. Because you stopped at three kids. I stopped at three kids. They kept going. So the rest of those kids raised the other ones. So they're all, they, they got, they got, they're, they're, he's not just in manufacturing, he knows the assembly line process, and that's what they've got going on over there in the Walsh household. So I, I, I can't get away from, uh, uh, from, from picking on them, but, uh, uh, but I, I get to announce uh, uh, my good friend John Francisco, who's uh, from the Syracuse uh, area. Uh, he's been a, a long-standing, uh, outspoken voice in the New York State Senate uh, for conservatism, for Republican values uh, over the years. Uh, I've really, in the last six years, gotten to know John very well, uh, gotten uh, close with John, uh, was supportive of his uh, run for leadership of the Senate a few years ago, uh, came up one or two votes short, but still managed to, uh, uh, we kept things together. Uh, he's a team player. Uh, but I can tell you, in our conferences that we have in the State Senate, which last often several hours a day, sometimes six, eight, or longer hours a day, depending on the time of the year, he's one of the most rational voices about what we should be doing, about how we should be attacking Governor Cuomo, and he's not afraid to keep his mouth shut. He's a strong advocate for the values that we stand for here uh, in Stabenk County. Uh, as our, you know, and I don't want to turn this into, you know, we've got great candidates, as I've said, and John would be a great candidate for governor. And we're not going to get into a contest in this state about a Republican primary and who's going to out conservative the next guy or have the most values. Uh, these are all good people. And I'm glad that we've got these people in the race uh, to run and go against uh, Governor Cuomo uh, next year, because we need it uh, in this state. Uh, and John was the uh, long-serving chairman uh, of the Senate Finance Committee. Uh, he leads the debate on the floor of the New York Senate uh, now. Uh, you follow Tom Libis, uh, right, John, in that position? Um, doing an outstanding job, and he's been a vocal critic of Governor Cuomo over the years. Uh, and I look forward to your remarks uh, tonight, John, uh, as I have uh, in other times. So I had him up at the uh, Yates County uh, Scope uh, Candidates Forum earlier this summer, uh, and he's making his rounds as Brian and Mark and, uh, and Harry, S or Harry Wilson is uh, starting to now. So uh, we've got a great lineup of candidates, and it's my honor tonight to be able to introduce John DeFrancisco, uh, our Deputy Majority Leader in the New York State Senate. Joe, do I have any time left? I'm sorry, we're done. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the longest introduction I've ever had in my life, uh, but uh, I agree with all of it. Um, and when, uh, the, when Joe mentioned that he's serving us in, 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 the, in Washington, I said the reason he said that, and, and Tom is absolutely right, I said that's because you don't do shit in Albany. But, uh, <laughs> But that's exactly, so what he said is actually correct. And uh, that's why the New York Times, that's why the New York Times, and I'm proud of this, I never, other than this point, have ever quoted the New York Times. When they mentioned my name among the great candidates that the Republicans have out there right now, they describe me as the irascible, is that correct, Tom? Straight shooter. And I'll take that any time of the day, especially in contrast to the person who uh, believes he's the emperor of the state of New York. 
The exact opposite can be said of this individual, and somebody's got to beat him. That's why there's so many good Republicans running around and trying to give the, uh, the Republican Party a choice, a choice, and try to pick the best candidate that we can all gel around, because we've got to win. Now, I normally end this, uh, my, my remarks with this, but I, th I think I want to start with it today. So many people have told me, you know, the governor's got so much money, he's uh, an incumbent, it's a Democrat state, it's this, it's that. We don't have a prayer. And these are coming from Republicans. So let's just sit back and maybe we can, uh, maybe we can get by for a few more years until things change. Well, I don't agree with that at all. And I don't follow fool's errands. I believe he can be beaten. And I keep telling people, and if you were around during the Pataki era, I was, there was a guy by the name of Cuomo who was running against Pataki, or vice versa, Mario Cuomo. And if you recall, those of you who remember this, Mario Cuomo was being talked about for president of the United States. The state was in a deficit at that time, a deficit. Right now, don't take my word for it, Democrat Tom DiNapoli tells us there's a $4 billion structural deficit. And think about that for a minute. $4 billion structural deficit. And it was just a few years ago that there were settlements with banks for illegal activity where the state of New York benefited, I think it was eight to $10 billion. Where did that money go? From a gift of eight to $10 billion through lawsuits we're still in a $4 billion deficit. Where it went, just pick up the paper any day of the week. It went to 50 million for this project, 60 million for that project, 80 million for that project. And this was the same type of situation. The economy was going bad, really bad, in the Mario Cuomo later years, and that's why he lost. And we got five or six people that are out there uh, nobody knows you guys in New York City. That's where all the votes are. Who the hell knew what a Pataki was? Who even knew it was a person? And that was shortly before he announced. So the attitude then, and I've told everybody this, I still have a pin. I helped George back then. A pin that says Cuomo with a red line over it. Because the attitude of people back there at that time was anybody but Cuomo. Now, that may be true for Republicans or conservatives, but in my city, Syracuse, we have a mayor, Stephanie Miner, and that mayor is as progressive as you can be, or, or in another term, as far away from people in this room as you could possibly be. She believes strongly that Andrew Cuomo has to go. He has to be beaten. She's looking at it from a different perspective a different political philosophy. But that attitude is out no matter what part of the political spectrum you're in. And when there's that much dissatisfaction, if you could rate, uh, be in a, a campaign with somebody who's aggressive enough that calls the governor on what he's doing wrong and convinces people that it can change and you could really make a difference and this could be won by a Republican, it could happen. It's, and it won't be the first time. So. To those of you that think maybe uh, you know this is a fool's errand and why are these people running around trying to get the Republican nomination, it's not true at all. It's doable, it's doable if we all get together, no matter who the candidate is, everybody supports that candidate, it can be done. Now, I had mentioned a couple, uh, the governor's sending out millions of dollars here, millions of dollars there. There was a Startup New York program that I voted against way back when when the governor first got in office. And that's basically where companies could be given millions of dollars and, and they come in and they don't pay taxes for 10 years, they don't pay property taxes because they're on universities. It, it, was, it just was too, it didn't make any sense to me. Well, let me give you a couple, just a couple of these items. Norsk Titanium Plattsburgh plant received $125 million and you know how many jobs they created? 110. That's, if, and I'm not the best at math, that's a million dollars a job. 
Now, can you imagine what small businesses could do if that $110 million was distributed in some tax breaks for the small business person who is struggling to make that business continue, struggling to keep his people employed, and trying to gain more employment? Instead, what does the governor do with respect to that? Uh, all uh, raising the uh, minimum wage. At the same time, we hadn't even finished the last cycle of, of minimum wage. It had just completed on October 3rd. Then he decides on 15%. Well, we fought like hell in the Senate. Tom was screaming and yelling. Uh, and so, so was everybody that uh, in that state Senate. But we have a divided Senate, and we weren't able to stop it. We were able to modify it. So upstate New York, it would only go up to 12 and a half, but more and more burdens on small businesses. And you know what happened because of that? Last year, the first year in a long, long time, the state actually lost population. You know how we lose congressional representatives every 10 years? Because we don't gain as much population as other states? Last year, we lost population. So when you see the governor uh, preening before cameras, talking about how we saved upstate New York. Well, you and I know that that's not the case, but the best proof of the pudding is people are leaving more than people are coming in. That's a bad sign for our tax base and a bad sign for our future. In my neck of the woods, $15 million for a Central New York film hub. The idea was they were going to bring some company from California that were going to start making films in Syracuse. All right? I learned about the company, and I actually told members of the administration that this is not a legitimate company. They've got debts. They've got judgments against them. Nobody listened. Nobody cared. This was going to work. But the governor needed a good splash in the paper for that time of year. He gives $15 million. That company never did a thing in central New York. Now the film hub is, is basically vacant. They do a couple of films. They did two, two short films in the last four or five years. $15 million. Right next door, there's a plant, a lead lighting plant. $70 million. $70 million. That's, that was given about four, three years ago. It's still not completed. And in fact, you're going to hear about a trial going on in January, uh, which involves one of his close associates, Percoco, one of his best friends. In fact, Mario Cuomo called him like a son. He's going to jail, for, not going to jail, he's going to trial for uh, these, uh, the activities surrounding this particular program. Maybe it's innocent, who knows? But that's what's happening. Not only is that place vacant, it hasn't been completed, $70 million. But next door at the film hub that was completed, the state, the, the owner of the building that the state gave the money for is suing the state because the state's not paying rent. Now what, what is this? This isn't leadership. This is, this is just wrong. It's simply wrong. And we've got to call that out. I've got so many other examples here. I'm not going to go through all of them. But that's the general principle of what's happening. The economy needs these actions that will spread the wealth around as far as tax breaks and not just give to the few big money to a few favored people and the person that's going to make that decision is literally one person. It's not only upstate New York. It's not only upstate New York. Have you followed the subway situation and the train situation in New York City? If you did, back about six months ago, the uh, the Second Avenue subway was completed. And who was out there before the cameras just glowing that he made it happen but Andrew Cuomo? Go fast forward a few months, trains are going off the track, there's fires in the subway, there's uh, no air conditioning working, the summer of hell in New York, you see all the headlines, lines of people can't get on. What did Andrew Cuomo say at that time? What did he say? It's de Blasio's fault. It's de Blasio. Now, we know we can blame de Blasio for a lot of things, but you can't take the credit for making a line happen on the 2nd Avenue and then a few months later blame somebody else whenever there's a problem. 
And I challenge everyone, and your chairman has heard this several times, but I'll challenge everyone here, tell me one time since Governor Cuomo was Attorney General or Governor, when he's ever said, I made a mistake, it was wrong, I'm gonna change direction, and I'm gonna do what's right. Never. I'm still waiting. I'm st I've been doing this for about four months now. No one has told me one situation when that happens. And good leaders admit to problems. And good leaders admit to mistakes and try to correct them, not blame someone else and, and take credit for many things that you shouldn't be taking credit for. I've got so many things that I can tell you, but being the last speaker here, it's very difficult to go through each one of these things. But the fact of the matter is, is that you can't, you've got to have a leader that's upfront, that's honest. Maybe, maybe an irascible straight shooter. Maybe an irascible straight shooter, to quote my favorite paper. But the fact of the matter is, it's time. It's doable. It's something that if we come together, we'll get it done. And by having all of these candidates out there saying the same thing and pointing everyone to the same goal, it can be done. So when the time comes for a vote, uh, and if I'm still in the race, if I decide to go forward to actually seek the vote, I'd appreciate your support for the nomination. And in any event, I'm going to be there helping whatever candidate, if it's not me, uh, make a change at the top. So maybe some unknown, not by the name of Pataki, but maybe a guy, uh, guy by the name of DeFrancisco, or Cole, or uh, Molinero, or Wilson, or Astorino, whomever, that they, everybody unite like we've never united before because we have to get rid of this guy. End of story. And if you're watching, Andrew, I'm going to be saying this all throughout the state. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator. And I, I want to reemphasize that. We've had two great potential next governors here tonight. Uh, these are two gentlemen I've had a chance to get to know pretty well over the course of the, the summer. I've uh, been at a lot of events with both of these gentlemen. And uh, to restate what the Senator said, Governor Cuomo has to go. Uh, whether you are somebody who's concerned about the bad fiscal policy, the taxes that are driving people out of New York State, whether you're somebody that's concerned about bad social policy, you're concerned about life, you're concerned about the Second Amendment, you're concerned about family values, Cuomo's got to go. Whether you're somebody that's just concerned about good government and you're concerned about corruption, and you're concerned about somebody that cares more about looking at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue than taking care of business in Albany, Cuomo has got to go. We have to unify around uh, the candidate that uh, the, the folks throughout the party and throughout the state uh, choose. That's been the attitude of all of the folks that, uh, that are running, that they want to unify, they want to avoid a, a division within the Republican Party. I think we're going to be able to do that and move forward. And Cuomo can be beaten uh, in 2018. He must be beaten in 2018. So again, thank you to Leader Cole and Deputy Leader uh, DeFrancisco for taking the time uh, to come here to Stuben County. I know the, us in the smaller, more rural counties, we really appreciate when statewide candidates are willing and able to come and talk to us. It's a real honor to have you both here. So thank you on behalf of Steuben County for coming here. And I've been reminded over the course of the evening that the Buffalo Bills are just about starting right now. So with that, Father Lou Brown. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for all your blessings, for food and drink that nourish, for messages that motivate, for the gifts of leadership, the time and talent of volunteers and co-workers, and for an informed and active electorate. May we be blessed with your peace tonight and every night. In your holy name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you, everyone, and remember to vote on Tuesday. <laughs>